Hello everyone, my name is Viraj and today we'll be looking at the first problem from the CP31 sheet by TL Illuminators under the 1000 rated questions. Let's go. So move down to my sheet over here and I have ticked off 1000, swap and delete. Let's read this. You are given a binary string S, a string consisting only of zeros and ones. You can perform two types of operations on S. What are they? Delete one character from S. This costs you one coin. Swap any pair of characters in S, this is free. You can perform these operations in any order and any number of times. Let's name a string you got after performing these operations above ST. The string T is called good. If for each I from one to the length of T, TI is not equal to SI. An empty string is always good. Note that you're comparing the resulting string T with the initial string S. What is the minimum total cost to make the string T good? All right, so you have an n-side string that is binary in nature. So string is like s1, s2, s3, s4, so on till sn. And every si belongs to 0 or 1. That means it's binary. Now, we want to finally create a new string t from this s only. I want to create a new string t such that any character that I pick up, let's say this is t1, t2, T3, so on, any character that I pick up in T corresponding to that, the same index, the same letter in S should not match. The same character in S should not match. So S1 should not be equal to T1, S2 should not be equal to T2, and so on and so on, till whatever limit you can actually make this. Now, this thing that you have to do, the creation of T from S can be done by two particular operations. Those operations say that first type is remove any character, any character from S, any character from S. So I'll pick up, let's say any, any SI letter and I'll just remove it. Any character I'll remove it. It is zero, it is one, it doesn't matter. And this brings me one cost. This is like an operation you can say, and it is counted. It is giving you one cost. And then the other thing is swap any positions, any SI, SJ. As in you pick up any two, uh, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, whatever you want, pick up any two places and just swap them. And this is going to have no cost. So you basically don't count this operation. Now they are saying there is no limit on the number of operations that you perform. There is no order also fixed for you that how do you want to perform them? It's just that I want to make sure that I create this T and while doing so, I want to make sure that I use the minimum cost. I hope this part is clear. So uh, let us talk about one of the cases and I think we we'll much understand this. So let's say I pick up the last case, one, 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 zero, zero, zero. So you have one, 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 one and zero, zero. Okay. Now this is S. So what I can do over here is I can swap this zero and swap this zero at this location. So S becomes zero, zero, one, 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 one. And then I can basically delete these four places. So I performed two swaps over here, two swaps you can say, and I did four deletions. Now, this is finally what I will call the string T. So string T is zero, zero. And what is S? S initially was one, 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 zero, and zero. So now remember the limit till T is being created is only this much. And in that limit, don't you think the conditions are followed? Is this letter equal to this letter? No. Is this letter equal to this letter? No. And after this, this is practically empty. So they have also given you a small direction over here only that empty string is also considered good, right? The empty string is always good. So after this, because there are no characters, I can just assume that this part is all good. Okay. Now this being said, I know that I have performed overall four actual operations I want to count because the swaps were never counted. So my answer becomes four. Let's go back and see. Yes, the answer to this test case is four. All right, so I hope the question has become clear. Pause the video and check out the other cases also. I'll give you a brief just once more. All you want is somehow create a new string T and when you complete so and compare this with S up to the limit that you have created T, make sure that the letters don't match. And then you know that doing so, the deletions that you did, you have to count them and those should be the lowest one possible. And in this particular test case, I'm arguing that you could have not done anything better than four. You cannot do anything lower than four. 
Okay, I hope this has become clear. Now let us talk a little about time complexity. We have been told that test is giving me one second of allowance. That means 10 power eight order of operations. And then it's written that there are some test cases in this particular test file, but it's written that the total length of all strings don't exceed two into 10 raised to five order, which means I don't need to bother with test cases anymore. I can directly have a comparison. One test is giving me 10 raised to eight operations allowance and the length of S let's call that N is given in two into 10 raised to five order or the summation of all S you can say that com that comparison factor is two into 10 raised to five order. So I can create a solution that is like O of N, right? I can create an O of N solution, linear solution, of course, a little larger like N log N also solution works and square root n will also work if you compare for 10 raised to 5 by 10 raised to 8. But if you go in a brute solution of something like an n square, this is a problem, come down, up to constant, everything is good to go. So solutions like this are promoted and solutions like this are not promoted. And this is helpful. Why? Because now I know that when I create my solution, don't do anything that uses like two for loops or goes in n square or anything like that. I don't want that. That is not going to work. All right. And this is where we can start finally with our discussion of the problem. Now, first things first, let's try to understand these two operations and let's see practically what do they help you do. I'll not talk about the first operation because the first operation has a cost. Okay. So let's first understand the second operation. Now the second operation says swap anything and it's free of cost. So you don't consider it. You can do it unlimited number of times. And when I say swap anything that practically means indirectly, you can reorder the string however you like. Don't you think this is true? Let's say the letter is S1, S2, S3. Now, if you say that I want to build something that looks like S3, S1 and S2, something like this. Very easy. Just bring S2 and S1 over here. And then maybe I can bring S3 over here. Don't you think this swapping that will happen will end up with S3, S1, S2, something like this? Practically saying that whichever sort of a permutation combination you wanted to create out of that string, you can because swapping of any two places is allowed and it's practically free of cost. So the second operation is very, very powerful. We have basically been told that you can reorder the string, the binary string, however you like. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Now let's take an example. Let's say S over here, as I told, was let's say something like one zero zero one 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 zero zero zero. Now tell me, is there any operation that is given to you by which you can make a zero to one or a one to zero? I don't think so. No operation like this allows you. So you know that if you have to work with this string, you only have four ones to work with and five zeros to work with. Great. Let's talk a little about T. Now, when I would try to create T and I would want to do that from, let's say, left to right, what is the main simulation that should run in my head? Let's say from left to right, I had just now landed at a one. Now, if I want to make sure that up till this location, I know TI should not be equal to SI, then don't you think I would want that mapped to this value, a zero comes at this place? Yes, that makes sense. A zero should come. Now bear with me a little, I'll write it over here. You had your one count is four and your zero count is five. Now, when I want a zero at the front location, you can imagine that I have somewhere or the other reordered the string right now. So that a zero comes in the front. And now that the zero has come in that front compared to the original string, you can say that is now fixed or that is used. So I can say that this five turns to four. Now there are four free zeros with me and one zero has already been occupied and it has taken the first location because the first location in the original string was one and I wanted a zero. Now let's talk about this zero. Next place. This is a zero. If I don't want the letters to match, I should want this to be a one. Now I have four free ones right now, which were available to me to reorder. So can I just pick one of them and make sure that they land up at this second place? Because remember, I can reorder however I like, how many times I like. So I can bring a one over here somewhere in the string randomly and I can say my count has gone to three. Next time I can say, okay, now I have a zero. I again want a one. So this will be going one, use the one and boils down to two. Now I want a zero. So I'll say, okay, I have zeros. Let's broad this down to three, a zero. Then I have one more zero. So this is like used up two. And then I want again a zero. So this becomes one. Now after this, I want a one. So this is like one. 
and then a final one is used and this goes to zero. And then finally, when you land at the last zero, you typically want a one at this location. But do you think you have a one at this location? Like, do, do you think you can actually do that? Just see right over here. Up till this portion, you have used four zeros, which have been fixed. Initially, you had four zeros to begin with. So now do you think at this location, if you want a one, you have a one in the first place. Remember, you cannot create more ones. You just want to work with the ones that are already there by somewhere or the other swapping. So that means you will, after this point, the first place of mismatch that happened, and you were not left with enough ones or zeros to actually place there, you will have to stop. And after that, you will be forced to place the leftover letters, which in this case is you only are left with one zero. So you'll place that zero at this location. I hope this makes sense. And now this is all the swapping that has been done. Now, what have I done right over here? You can imagine that I have somehow swapped the S string in a greedy manner in such a way that T looks like this now. Now in this T, see to what location are you actually creating? What is the required condition? This condition is fulfilled. This is fulfilled. This is fulfilled. This is there. 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 But just after this, remember the place where we got stuck and we did not have enough ones left over. After that, you can see that there was a zero and I was forced to only place a zero there. I had no ones left. So don't you think after this, after the greedily possible largest string you did create by simulating requirements, whichever you wanted to do after this, you will be forced to do what? Just delete what is left. That means after this point, and had there been, let's say, more strings, had there been, let's say, more stuff, I would be forced to delete all of this in the string S. And this is the count of operations I would actually, actually get. That means my idea would be to greedily simulate T from the left-hand side by saying whatever requirement I want, I will try to fulfill it. As soon as I know I cannot fulfill it, I know that is the largest T string I can create. You started from left, you had a one, you wanted a zero, requirement was there, and was it available? Yes, so I fulfilled it, moved on. Kept on moving on, kept on moving on, and reached a position where I wanted a one, but I did not have any one available with me, so my requirement is there, but it's not available, need to pause, and after that, everything can be imagined as something I want to remove, so, Beyond that point, all the leftover portion is counted as deletions. And this is indirectly the exact contribution of the cost. And this is greedily the minimum possible also, because you have indirectly made sure that before that, whatever is the largest T you could have actually, actually created, you did that. So after this, you know, if this is the largest T you created, indirectly you minimize the number of deletions. Okay, I hope this part should make sense. And this is the whole algorithm. Let's talk about a little pseudocode in this. What I would do, I would count the number of ones first. And I would count the number of zeros first. So let's say this is some value. And count of zeros is also some value. Now what I'll do is I'll run a for loop in the string. And then I'll say there is let's say some t size, which is right now zero, I haven't started the creation of t size. So it's right now zero. I'll run a loop, let's say this is a nine pointer goes less than n and so on. Now I'll say, okay, if s of i is equal equal to zero. Now if s of i is zero, in the t string, I would have preferred I have a one. That means and and c1 should be greater than zero. If this happens, s i is zero and c1 is there, is available with me, oh, I'll use that c1 and size of t will increment because now you know you have expanded one more. Else if, if you feel that S of I is one and and C zero is available, then you will say, okay, now if it is a one and in the T corresponding, I want a zero and zeros are there, let's use them. So one subtraction there and TS increases once more because that expands my size. But if you go in the else block, you will say finally break because if you enter the else block, that means you had a zero, you wanted a one, it was not there. You had a one, you wanted a zero, it was again not there. That means no requirement is now available with you, you have to break. And after this point, what is the answer? You know that TS is going to store the largest size of T, largest size of T. So the size of the string S, let's say I'll call that something like S mod minus TS is your 
answer because the leftover characters which want the deletion would be total size of s minus the size of t that you were able to create that is the number of letters you want to remove want to delete and this is the answer okay i hope this makes sense so a very greedy idea just pause the video and think it once again all i'm trying to do is just simulate how do i make t and i'm just fulfilling requirements as i go along and i pause where i cannot make it any further so this is like the simplest uh, explanation we can have of this greedy based approach okay now what we'll do is we'll look into one of the test cases and we'll again simulate our whole idea and see what we can do so let's talk about like the second case 011 i mean this is very small so just a brief quick understanding 011 let's count the c1 2 let's count c0 1 now from the left start building there is a zero you want a one is there a one available yes so i'll decrement this this becomes one and i place a one or imagining that I place a 1, indirectly that would mean that your TS size has now gone from 0 to 1. Now there is a 1, I want a 0, is there a 0 available? Yes, there is. So I'll make it 0 and size increases to 2. Now there is a 1, I want a 0, but is there 0 available? No. So pause and this is the final string size that you break from. Now the string size total is 3, the string that you now created greedily was 2. Answer becomes 1. That means one letter needs deletion from the original string S. Yes, the answer is also one. All right, so that is all that is there in this problem. Let's quickly look at the code piece, just how I showed you the pseudo. You have t string, take the input, then the n's size of the string, count of zeros, count of ones, first iteration, get the count of zeros and ones. So if si is zero, plus plus, if it's one, count of one plus plus. Then the length of t starts with zero, go again in the for loop. If it is a zero and ones are available, minus ones, increment size if it's a one and there are zeros available minus zeros increment size else break what is the answer n that is the size of string minus length of t that you were able to greedily create that is your answer what is the time complexity now this is like n order to take the input this is n order again and this is n order again pretty much everything is constant so we know that we have created a solution that is o of n which means you have like o of 2 into 10 raised to 5 order and same thing is there for you can say space complexity also comes from the size of that string okay so very easy first base greedy problem i hope this helps that is all that is there in this video i hope you like it thank you for watching